Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Bob's Builds. This is episode three, the final episode in our Hydro Assist series. Today, choosing a hydraulic ram for Hydro Assist. Let's first look at ram size. You will need to know stroke, bore, and rod size. Let's measure what stroke we need. Turn your vehicle to one extreme. Measure the distance from the axle tube to the tie rod or wherever you will be mounting your ramp. Let's call this measurement M1. Now turn to the other extreme and take the same measurement. This will be M2. Okay, this is going to get complicated. So I brought out the chalkboard. Take M1 and minus that from M2. That is your minimum stroke. Yeah, if you needed to know that, you should probably just go buy a kit. But I would suggest you oversize the stroke a little. That way your steering isn't limited by your hydraulic ram. Now for the bore size, which isn't so simple. I got an inch and a half bore, which I see recommended a lot in forums. A bigger bore pushes harder, but is slower to move. So if you get a two inch bore, you may feel some resistance as you turn the steering wheel fast. This could give your vehicle a lethargic feeling. A high flow power steering pump will allow you to get a bigger bore, so that is an option. You can also get a smaller pulley for your power steering pump. This would increase the speed of the pump and therefore increase the flow output of the pump. While we're on the subject of power steering pumps, let's talk reservoir. You'll need a bigger one. You also need some resemblance of cooling. You're pushing a lot more fluid around, which generates a lot more heat. My cooling is through the reservoir. I made this reservoir out of copper pipe. Oddly, my dad had this lying around. You can get a power steering cooler, and I may, but I'm going to see if this can keep it cool. Since we're talking fluid, let's talk pressure. All hydraulic rams have a maximum operating pressure. You will need to get a hydraulic ram that can handle at least as much pressure as your power steering system operates at. How much pressure does a power steering system run at? I have no idea. I've seen anywhere from a couple hundred psi to 2000 psi. My ram can handle 3000 psi, so I'm fine. Just because there's so little information on the subject, I would suggest getting a hydraulic ram that can handle at least 2500 psi. This should be fine, but no guarantees. Now that we know what stroke we need, what bore size to get, and we're pretty sure that the ram won't blow up due to overpressure, let's look at rod diameter. My suggestion? Go with the smallest rod possible. A bigger rod is stronger, but it'll pull with less force. So if you have a choice and it can handle the pressure, go with the smaller rod. Now, what goes on to the end of that rod? There are many mounting options for rams. I would suggest swivel eyes. And not just because it sounds like a nickname for your crazy friend. Hey swivel eyes, how's it going? No, no, don't take off your... Ugh. Your ram will need to move side to side. Swivel eyes allow for this movement. Clevis, cross tube, and just plain old drilled don't allow for side to side movement. There's also threaded ends. For example, this hydraulic cylinder is threaded to accept tie rod ends but most other hydraulic ramps are threaded to accept clevises. So just stick to swivel eyes. No dude, swivel eye ends, not you. And finally, double acting and single acting ramps. Single acting means the ramp only pushes, while double acting means the ram can push and pull. So obviously you want double acting. You could use two single acting ramps, but don't. Single acting ramps have vents in them. As the ram extends, air is pushed out. As the ram contracts, air is pulled in. Unless of course you're underwater, then water gets pulled in, which is really, really bad. And there you have it. Go build a hydro assist system for your vehicle. As always, any questions down below. And let me know if you have any friends called swivel eyes. Mine is invisible. Dude, put your sunglasses back on. No one wants to see that. Sheesh. Now, if you're good, brave, or stupid, the ideal place to add your ports is at the valve body. This would give you maximum flow and it would be the safest place for your fittings.